Hi, I'm Brian Crum. I'm a neurologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I work in the EMG lab and I also specialize in neuromuscular disorders, including ALS or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. My name is Eric uh, Sorensen. I'm a neurologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. When the initial diagnosis is made, one of the most common questions is, what's going to happen to me? Uh, patients have often read about the disease. Uh, they know that the prognosis is really quite poor. They uh, know that, for example, the life expectancy might be on average three to five years from the time the symptoms begin. Uh, and I think we obviously reiterate that with patients, but I think the point is that um, some patients live longer than that, and there's always hope. Uh, we obviously cannot predict who's going to live longer and who's not going to live longer when we initially see somebody. Uh, but I think when you look at the numbers, it's important to realize that 25% of patients may do better than that, live longer than five years. About 10% of patients live longer than 10 years. Uh, so there are patients who do better than the average. Uh, and again, it's always hard to predict who that's going to be. And we don't have a specific intervention that can uh, translate somebody who's going to only live three to five years into somebody who's going to live 15 years yet. Hopefully we will. Uh, but I think it's just important for people to know that there are uh, exceptions to the rules. And uh, uh, so it's important to have hope and understand that uh, while this is a disease that has a really poor uh, outlook and prognosis, some people do better than the norm. And I think also important to realize that patients who are in the later stages of ALS sort of reflect on their disease and really feel that it's important to live every day to its maximum. And I think when you look and read about uh, patients who've had that, that's one of the underlying themes is that patients um, generally come to an acceptance with the disease and realize that every day is precious and valuable and uh, they will live every day as if it's their last, not knowing when that day will come. And I think having that hope and having that really that, that mindset is really, really quite a, uh, useful for these patients. I will say probably the most commonly asked questions that we get about uh, uh, treating the disease is whether patients should try uh, various medications, vitamins, nutritional supplements. Um, uh, you know, they hear all kinds of things, they read all kinds of things. Uh, and my advice to patients in this regard in general is that for the most part um, uh, I don't discourage people with ALS people with ALS frequently try uh, a number of things and I don't really discourage people from trying things but they have to understand that in going in using some of these treatments or using some of these things there there's little evidence that they are effective uh, most of them are generally safe but some of them aren't and so you have do have to be careful about what they try and we hope hopefully we can guide them in that regard but also, um, oftentimes what you'll read or hear, people are necess not necessarily, uh, well, they're, they're hearing these things from people who uh, really have their hand in their back pocket. Their, their, their objective is not so much to treat their disease, but to fleece them out of as much money as they can. And that largely preys on a, these patients' desperation that they get. And I mean, it's understandable why this occurs, but I try and caution people against getting involved in um, things that are expensive, unproven, and um, really have little, little evidence or chance of success. We're frequently asked uh, whether or not exercise is of any benefit. Um, and the best advice I can give there is that um, some people kind of get in their head that they're going to do these marathon training programs and lift a lot of weights or push themselves uh, on a treadmill or whatever, or whatever their exercise of choice might be, and um, yeah, with the thought that they're going to exercise their way out of it. Uh, and um, I, I think that, that uh, what they do in pushing themselves like that is that, first of all, it doesn't stop the disease and it doesn't bring the strength back. Um, and what it does is set themselves up for overuse injuries, uh, tendonitis, bursitis, um, various uh, tendon strains. Uh, and people with ALS aren't going to recover from those overuse injuries as well as people who, do not, who are able to rehabilitate themselves more normally. Uh, and so I caution people against getting into these marathon training programs. The, uh, you know, the other thing though is it is true, you know, the old adage, use it or lose it. Uh, yeah, there is some truth to that. And like I said, most people don't want to go home and spend their days and uh, the rest of their days in a lazy boy. And so we encourage them to be active and do as much as they can, but not to push themselves to the point where it's painful or push themselves to the point where they're um, uh, pushing themselves hard uh, in these exercise programs. And like I tell people, I don't want to spend the rest of my life exercising, so I have better things to do than that. So, um, 
So we try and keep it in moderation, keep their exercise in moderation. 